Leslie suddenly says she's pregnant. This unexpected event interrupts all of Gordon's plans. Oswald starts rolling his eyes when he hears about it. Gordon has no choice but to retreat for the sake of his baby. The environment in Gotham was too harsh and dangerous. He couldn't risk the future of the three of them in this sinful city. So the two of them decided to leave Gotham and stay away from the strife here. At that moment Wayne's butler and his partner Harvey came to them. Gordon chose to meet them again. After they spoke briefly, Harvey just looked back at Leslie. Leslie silently shifted from the passenger seat to the driver's seat. Gordon came over and changed his mind. He didn't think he could leave Gotham. Fortunately, he didn't just say something about retiring this time. Leslie left him a message to be safe and drove off. But when it came to Theo Galavin, Oswald and Gordon had a disagreement. Oswald thought that killing Theo would be the end of the matter. But Gordon insisted that Theo be brought to trial. The butler said that the least that could be done was to catch Theo first. And so Gotham's greatest villains took the field. They chose to go on foot to find Theo Galavin. By now Wayne had been sacrificed. Death will come to the sons of Gotham today. Just as the Archonage was about to strike at him, several key players in the main group finally arrived. They confronted the black-cloaked people in the arena. A battle was about to break out. The battle ended gloriously with the sacrifice of a few passersby and the victory of Gordon's side. Wayne was finally rescued. In fact, Theo Galavin had already prepared an escape plan. But the parachute back it prepared was not enough. The parachute is only for two people. So he decided to execute the family's ambassador before leaving. His action also aroused Tabitha's disgust. Tabitha knocks Theo down from behind his head. Tabitha chose to escape with her daughter by jumping out of the window. But that's when Gordon comes into the room. But that didn't scare Theo. He knew that Gordon was a righteous man and would bring him to trial. In that case... The worst Theo could do was to be sentenced to life imprisonment. So Theo Galavin put the handcuffs on himself without any pressure. But the last thing he should do is continue to provoke Gordon with his words. Theo said he wouldn't get the death penalty. That pissed Gordon off. So Gordon changed his mind. He did so at Oswald's request. Theo Galavin was loaded into the trunk of a car and taken to the riverbank. This is the best place to execute a man. But Theo Galavin's body was recovered because someone was going to use him for something big. Patrolman Gotham found a frouncing body when she tried to draw her gun and dispose of the body. A shot of ice came at her, so her movements were frouncing at the moment. She was about to fire the bullet. Victor is a freelance scientist. He's working on ways to freeze people quickly without harming them so that they can be preserved. The frouncing man was gradually revived by the yellow warm light. Victor was so excited when he saw it, he thought his experiment had finally worked. But then the thought man's body slowly went soft like jelly. Then he decomposed rapidly and turned into a puddle of mud. Mr. Freeze looked at the failed specimen in front of him and decided that he needed to increase the number of specimens he was experimenting on. Victor broke into the pharmacy that night. He fired a pillar of ice at the security guard on the side. The physician picking up the drugs was terrified. He took out the medicine he needed at Victor's request. But Victor continued to shoot another pillar of ice. He looked at the passersby who were leaving and called out to them. Victor said he needed help to carry the stuff. Victor carried the prepared specimens into the basement. He then left to take care of the mess. The noise he made drew his wife's attention. Nora came down to the basement to see what was going on. And there she found the frouncing man. So she called the Gotham Police Department. Borden and Harvey, who had been investigating the case of the frouncing people, arrived. Nora argued that her husband had never told her that he was experimenting on real people. She always thought Victor was experimenting on rats. But when Nora arrived at the police station, she suddenly changed her attitude. She refused to cooperate with the police to find Victor. Nora called the police in order to stop her husband from continuing his crimes. But Nora knew her husband was doing it for her. Nora had been sick for a long time. She was on some kind of medication to keep her alive. In severe cases, Nora would even cough up blood. Victor could only speed up his experiments when he saw his wife in such pain. The only way he could keep his wife alive until the day medical technology was advanced was to freeze her. What's worse is that Nora's medication was stopped. The pharmacist just looked at the medicine and asked Victor to show his doctor's prescription. Victor had not taken his wife to the doctor for a long time due to high debts. He didn't have a doctor's prescription. Then the bottle was pushed around between the two of them. But in the end, Victor couldn't get the bottle of medicine to save her life. This man frowns every single passerby just to save his sick wife. Then he thought each other in various situations. But every one of his experimental subjects ends up in a puddle of mud. Now that his wife knows the truth, 
she chooses to give up on her husband's human experimentation. Victor had to come to the Gotham police station to turn himself in. The detective just found him a place and told him to sit down and wait here. But Victor soon changed his mind. A frowning subject thought naturally. Victor saw him shivering in the cold at the Gotham police station and knew that his wife was saved. So Victor took advantage of the chaos to leave the police station. Later that night, Gordon received another report. Because Victor had done it again, only this time he found the subjects in a big block of ice. He wrote on the ice cube site a demand for his wife's release. The police department decided to send Victor's wife to Arkham Asylum in order to prevent Victor from committing any other extreme acts. Nora was placed in the care of Gordon's girlfriend Leslie. Because Arkham Asylum was safe enough, the attack also happened much earlier than the police thought. A large truck ran quickly and directly into Arkham Asylum and crashed into the car at the door. But the detectives opened the door to find the man behind the wheel with his hands frouncing to the steering wheel, unable to move. Victor, the main culprit, was not here. At this moment, inside the cell of Arkham Asylum, there was a large piece of frost frouncing on the wall. Then the wall broke into pieces. Victor just walked in without a hitch. The act of capturing Victor was already a difficult one, but the attending doctors at Arkham Asylum were still holding the detectives in various places. Victor came to a gate. He was about to tamper with the lock gate, but the next moment the gate opened automatically. Victor was guided to the front by the other side's instructions. He stared at the camera over his head and didn't know what to do. Eventually he was led to the electric chair. Hugo Strange, the man behind Arkham Asylum, talks to him. Strange says he'll help Victor escape. He'll get Victor out of here as long as he leaves a jar of cryogenic fluid. It's a good deal, of course. So Victor leaves a can of cryogenic fluid and took the keys to his car on the side. He finds Nora before Gordon can move his wife. He shoots the icicle, this disarming Gordon's only weapon. Victor then fled Arkham Asylum with his wife in his car, in order to freeze his wife harmlessly. Victor eventually takes Nora back to the lab. Nora was begging him. Nora hopes that Victor will let her go so she can wait for death to come. Nora can imagine life after being thought out. Victor could be in prison or dead by then. She can't only live alone in this world. But Victor told her to hold on a little longer. Because at least there's hope if you live. Nora wanted Victor to get the necklace before he did. The necklace is a souvenir of their marriage. Nora said she might take the necklace with her when she thought out. Victor dutifully went upstairs to get the necklace. Then Nora asked Victor to get water for her on the pretext that she wanted to drink it. Then she removed the coolant from the freezing gun. She replaced the freezing fluid with the one that had not been perfected before the freezing effect. When Victor came back, he put the necklace on his wife by hand. After they kissed each other goodbye, Victor started to freeze Nora with the freezing gun. The white frost slowly creeps onto Nora's face. Victor thinks she's ready to turn herself in. He gets close enough to look at his wife, only to find her body suddenly split open. Victor is going crazy with anxiety. What was wrong with her? He didn't realize what was happening until he saw the coolant in his wife's hand. At that moment, although his body was still alive, his heart was dead. Victor Saturday on the coolant reservoir and pulled the valve off the top of the reservoir. Then Victor slowly turned into an ice sculpture. But the city of Gotham never misses a talented person. Victor soon found himself waking up again. In front of him stood Arkham Asylum boss Hugo Strange. At this point, Hugo Strange looked in the mirror and had an even more outrageous idea. 